Now, together, we've laid a solid foundation that got us through some tough economic times and has brought us to a defining moment for our state. Now, with our economy picking up steam, how do we build on that foundation? With Washington paralyzed by politics, what can we do here in Missouri to make a lasting difference for real people? And when it's always easier to do the small things and declare victory, how do we tackle the big challenges? The things that matter most. Good schools, good jobs, and healthy communities for our kids to grow up in. Now, Missouri is a very diverse state. Just here in this room, we've got farmers and small business owners, artists and outdoorsmen. There aren't many things every single one of us would agree on. But here's one we can. Our single greatest responsibility as elected officials, as parents, as citizens of our state, is to make sure that every child in Missouri has an opportunity to achieve his or her dreams. And we all know that opportunity starts with education. Now, for centuries, public education has been a value we cherish as Americans, a value we've reaffirmed time after time. In the 1700s, Thomas Jefferson called for a public education system that would safeguard our young democracy from tyranny and oppression. In the 1800s, we established the land-grant university system, including the University of Missouri and Lincoln University. By 1900, every state in the nation had free public elementary schools. And when the greatest generation returned home from World War II, after literally saving a free world, a grateful nation honored them with something far more precious and patriotic than a ticker tape parade, the GI Bill. Shepherded through Congress by Missouri Senator Champ Clark, the GI Bill gave millions of Americans an opportunity their parents never had. <clears throat> the chance to earn a college degree without going into debt. Take a second to think of the impact that it had. Between 1940 and 1950, the number of degrees awarded by U.S. colleges and universities more than doubled. Over the next half century, the percentage of Americans with a college degree quintupled. They became engineers and small business owners, scientists and Supreme Court justices, presidents and preschool teachers. They bought homes, started families, and launched companies, creating the modern middle class and driving a post-war economic boom unlike anything the world has ever seen. We're joined by one of them tonight. Dr. Frank Fontana of St. Louis served in the Army during World War II and followed the front lines all the way to Berlin. That's not all he did, folks. <laughs> when he came home, the GI Bill provided him the opportunity to get a degree in optometry, and later he started his own practice. He married the love of his life, Doris, and they had two sons they put through school. The GI Bill gave Frank the opportunity to pursue his dreams, to support his family, and to become a great optometrist. I should know. He's mine, and I can see him. Please join me in thanking Frank Fontana for his service and reminding us, more importantly, of what the American dream is really about. Thank you, my friend.
This nation's greatest generation made a commitment to education. And as a result, they made the United States the driver of the global economy and the undisputed leader of the free world. Now it's our turn to carry on that legacy. Now we must work to help every child start school ready to learn. We must demand that every school is getting the job done, and we must make sure that every student can afford to get a college degree. So, to, so together, let's resolve to give our children and grandchildren more opportunities, better opportunities than we had, and build the future they deserve.